Now I wanna share with you some of the things that I've learned over the years that have helped me in my own personal study. These steps have benefited me tremendously and I believe that when you apply them, they will help you too. Now imagine yourself ready to study, you've picked a book of the Bible and you're ready to dive in. Tip number one is pick a place. Find a place that's quiet where you won't get interrupted. Now, if you have small kids at home, it could be that your home is the noisiest place on the planet. You know, I can remember that when I would study scripture when my, when my kids were small, I'd have to go inside my bedroom closet and just get away from all the noise. But here's what I want you to remember. When we study scripture, it needs our focus and our attention. So pick a place that's quiet that you can get away for just a while and be with the Lord. Step number two is purge. Momentarily set aside your to-do list, even your phone, and the requests of others. Now, if you're like me, you sit down to study scripture or read the Bible, and you have a million things going on in your mind. Things that you have to do, emails that you have to send. All those things are critical, but not right now. So if you have to, write them down on a sheet of paper and set them aside. This time is for you and the Lord and you don't want any distractions to keep you from hearing what he has for you. Step number three is prayer. Prayer will prepare your heart and your mind. This is critical. Ask God to anoint the special time that you're having with him and to give you guidance and wisdom, understanding and revelation. Acknowledge that he is present with you and thank him for being there with you at that time. You know what, you might feel like before you even get started that you need some things that you need to confess and talk to him about. Go ahead and do that then. Ask him, maybe say, Lord, open up my spiritual eyes and my spiritual ears to hear you and to see your, your treasures in the word. And plant your word in my heart and transform it. Lord, give me a supernatural love for you and your word. Give me a desire to be trained up and led by your spirit and help me to remember that what I'm learning, I can share it with others. In my time alone, help me to know and love you more and more. For when I do, then I will have achieved my greatest goal for today. Next step is worship. This, this step is absolutely critical for me. You know, I'd love to tell you that every time I sat down to study scripture, I was in the best mood or I had a song in my heart or a bounce in my step, but that's not the truth. Sometimes I'll sit down and I'll read scripture and I'll feel discouraged or overwhelmed or frustrated because of what's going on in my life. And I need to shift the focus off of myself onto the Lord. I'm reminded of Zephaniah 317 that tells us that God rejoices over us with singing. If the God of the universe is rejoicing over us with singing, shouldn't we do the same with him? When we worship God, God hears us. He draws near to us and he acts on our behalf. Like I said, worship takes the focus off of us and shifts it towards God. It helps us to remember that God is in control of our situations and he is worthy to receive all of our praises. The next step is to get acquainted. Now, what do I mean by get acquainted? Well, you'll wanna become familiar with the surroundings and the backdrop of the passage or the book that you're reading before you dive into reading the text. This is imperative. There's three sections. There's the historical context, where you're basically trying to understand and learn what was the setting at the time when the author wrote the passage. What was happening with the people? What was going on in the timeline, in the history? Maybe the kings that were established or those that were in reign. The next is the cultural or social context. Consider what the cultural influences were, maybe the language that was spoken, the rituals at the time, the customs, and then there's a literary context. What is the style, the writing style that I'm reading in this particular book? It could be Old Testament historical narrative or New Testament. That word narrative is, a, is simply story. It might be a section of genealogy or wisdom in poetry literature. It could be prophecy or eschatology, 
or letters or epistles that were written. It might even be discourse, which is another word for just conversation between two or more people. Now you might be asking, this sounds like a lot of work. How on earth can I find the historical, cultural, and literary context before I sit down to read pa the passages? Well, here's another step. You start by reading the introductory notes in your study Bible. You see, if you have a good study Bible, which I hope you do, at the beginning of each book, you'll find the introductory notes. Now, I am gonna be completely honest with you. I used to skip over this all the time. Like, I was so anxious to get into the text and to read it and find out what it says, I wouldn't take time to read the introductory notes. That was a huge mistake. If you look to the two to six pages before each book, you'll see the information there. It's there that you can take note of the historical facts. It'll include important dates. It, you'll discover they have the main purpose and all the key themes of that particular book. You'll find out the book's uniqueness and you'll learn how it fits into the rest of scripture. You'll be able to review the main outline of the book, which will be broken down into chapter sections. It's all there for you. And as you read through the introductory notes, ask and answer these five questions. Who wrote the book? Who is the author? When was it written? Who is the audience? To whom was it written? In what style was it written? And why was it written? See, this is important foundational work. And as you collect these key details, it will equip you in advance to better understand the original meaning of the text. Take some time, imagine yourself stepping back in that era when the text was first spoken and written. Like try to hear it as if you were the original audience. Imagine how you would be perceiving the information for the very first time based on what's going on in your life and what's happening around you. You see, we have the tendency to read scripture and apply our current culture and personal perspective to it. We have to remember that the Bible is an ancient text written thousands of years ago.